We are near the Badlands National Park in South Dakota. We find ourselves today at Miniman Missile. Let's go check it out. Hi, fellow Americans. I'd like to talk to you today about the deep desire we all share to keep America free, secure, and at peace. In three days' time, American and Soviet negotiators will meet in Geneva to explore ways to reduce nuclear arsenals and lower the risk of war. So we got some good news and we got some bad news for you regarding this vlog. Here's the bad news. When we were here about five years ago, the Minuteman missile silo tour was unknown by virtually everybody. But now they have built this gorgeous new facility and they've advertised it and the tours are filled for the entire month. So we're not gonna get to go inside the actual command center. So the good news is that we were here five years ago and I will show you some pictures of our visit down to that command center. Also, the good news is the visitor center is outstanding. We'll show you all the things we did inside, some of the displays, and then also tomorrow we want to head over to an actual silo itself that has the ICBM missile, of course, with the nuclear warhead removed, still in its original location. We'll check that out tomorrow. Hope you enjoy this video log. This is the best I can do for you. We wanted to have a solid fuel rocket that was ready to go right away. So we developed the Minuteman system, and it's an homage to the Minutemen of the Revolutionary War who grab their hat and their gun and ready to go. They're always on duty. The Minutemen's always on duty. The reason they're in South Dakota is the easiest way to get to the Soviet Union was to go right up over the North Pole. It's the shortest distance. This was America's peak right here back in 1966. And then we started decreasing our production as the Soviets started to increase their production. They peaked out in 1985. And we began to disarm. When you come out of Badlands, you're going to drive 200 feet from a Minuteman missile silo that millions of people have driven by on their vacation and have no idea it's there. And with the missiles that still remain, yeah. there's obviously enough in the ground to get the job done. We have enough nuclear weapons still to this day to blow up the world three times over. And that's with our subs, our bombs, and these things. 1.2 megatons is 1.2 million tons of TNT. So if you, who, who drove across South Dakota this week? Okay, it's 403 miles, right? It's a train load of TNT box cars, 360 miles long. That's one minute man two missile. All the bombs dropped in World War II on all sides by air, including the two devices in Japan, is two megatons. So these missiles here in South Dakota, each one was 60% of the explosive force. It's a crazy amount of force, isn't it? Well, and the Soviets were five and ten megatons of huge weapons. As I mentioned earlier, all the tickets to go view the command center, also known as launch control, have been claimed. But if we were able to reserve a ticket, going inside this building right here is what we would have seen. Oh. 
let us pretend for a moment that we are the two missileers and we have just received an emergency war order. An emergency war order is issued by the President of the United States is issued for one reason. We are being attacked. We need to launch our nuclear weapons. A nuclear war has begun. We come over the teletype paper, the missileers would grab their padlocks. As a missileer, when you left, you left with that padlock. When you were off duty, you kept it with you at all times. You came back, you put it back on. You're the only person that knows what the combination of that lock is. 10,000 possible combinations. In other words, no one person can get into that red box. It contains two keys and something called the cookie. What the cookie is is a full piece of paper laminated shut. Can't tell what's on it until you break it. If this is an authenticated emergency war order, each missile air would grab a key out of that box. The deputy commander would grab the cookie, belt themselves here. The commander would belt themselves over there. The deputy commander would break that cookie, revealing an enabling code, which he put in the enabling panel, which enabled the missiles to be launched. The deputy commander would insert their key right there. The commander would insert their key right there. The keys had to be turned at the same time. No one person could turn those keys. Our missileers turn the keys. We get a second confirmation vote. Our job's done. Matter of fact, we don't have a job anymore. So the launch center is Delta One. This facility right here controlled the operations to launch uh, 10 different Miniman missiles that were situated in about a 15 mile radius from this location. We're going to head over to one of those right now. There's everybody. That's us and the Ranger, that's it. One car. So embarrassing. <laughs> Poor guy. I hope he's happy that someone showed up for his tour. So you saw the video of Delta One. That was the launch center, the command center. That command center had the capabilities to fire 10 different Miniman missiles located in this vicinity. That would be Delta Two all the way to Delta 11. Right now, we are at Delta number nine. Let's go check out the missile. 